this is our first topic for the course in ABE 153 and uh, a title of this topic is introduction to machine design now for the context of this presentation we'll have a brief discussion about um, agricultural machinery and then we'll talk about codes and standards um, the case studies and design considerations and as well as classification of um, machine components and also we'll have a discussion about uh, documents documents for mechanical designs and the scope of practice of an AB engineer and also the sign and seal okay so for the introduction machine design is one of the professional courses in ABE and of course in in ME but for ABE um, of course we will be um, within the scope of the uh, Republic Act 10915 section 4C okay so in this um, section 4C it describes what it means or it defines what it means uh, to say uh, agricultural and biosystems power and and machinery so um, here it says that it refers to farm power and machinery for the production uh, harvesting processing storage and uh, manufacture uh, transportation uh, but okay and distribution of agricultural and biological products and includes but is not limited to tractors um, and their attachments the implements and the um, power teeter seeders and also right here uh, we have milling milling equipments dryers threshers and also there's a lot all right so if we simplify this basically when we when we say um, agricultural um, machines right agricultural okay agricultural machines basically it's just a, any machines related to to agriculture okay so that's going to be the scope of um, scope of practice uh, r related to agriculture okay and uh, for the codes and standards um, in engineering practice uh, an engineer is actually governed by the codes and standards okay from which the data methods and procedures as well as other provisions are stipulated so right here we have the, um, the Philippine agricultural engineering standards and it's uh, it's now having I think vol uh, 11 volumes but right but right here I only included three volumes because for volume one this is a, a volume for the production machineries so for example um, wall bird plows or um, what else rotavators or things like that okay so any machineries for agricultural production operations so that's in volume one Okay, and for volume two, um, this is post post production, post production or processing equipment, like for example milling uh, milling equipment or let's say thresher, uh, dryers. Okay, so it's in this volume, volume two, and for volume three, probably this is the um, uh, this this one will be think the mostly used in this course because this includes topics about machine elements like for example pulleys um, uh, flat belts uh, chains chain and sprockets and things like that okay so it includes um, computations specifications about these machine elements okay another one is the uh, is the American Society of Agricultural and Biological Engineering uh, uh, engineers standards and uh, this includes actually not just the uh, mechanical or the um, not just the machinery but also it includes um, standards for for structures and also processing and irrigation uh, equipment and, and and things like that okay so another one right here is the Philippine mechanical code uh, since we are dealing with um, with mechanical systems although we are just limited to agricultural equipment then 
uh, I think it's also best to refer to this code okay and of course there's gonna be other codes and standards specifically for a certain type of machine like for example the gears uh, so there's an there's an organization um, specifically making uh, the standards for for gear manufacturing uh, gear materials and things like that or for chains and also other um, other organizations uh, for other standards okay now let's uh, let's discuss about a specific uh, a specific agricultural equipment that's common I mean that's common nowadays um, in the in the field okay so it's the combined harvester so basically this combined harvester is um, is for harvesting operation and what it does is it actually combines combines the cutting or reaping action all right cutting or let's just write here combines the cutting or reaping action and the threshing okay, threshing action okay so two separate actions that were done traditionally uh, it's now being combined okay so that's why it's called combined harvester so when that machine passes through the the standing crops uh, the end output is already the threshed grains okay so um, right here let's visit the, the hyperlinks okay so right here this is a this is an example of a combined harvester okay so this is the standing crops right here right this is the standing crops so once it passes the, uh, the standing crops it it cuts okay it cuts this uh, standing crop and then um, the end output would be the thresh grain inside this uh, inside the storage tanks and the um, threshing action is actually a separation uh, it's a separation of the of the grains okay from the shaft or from the um, panicles okay so this is already uh, uh, threshed thresh grains okay so inside this right, inside the inside this uh, this machine is there's actually a threshing cylinder so right here this is the header that's uh, that's where the um, the standing crop is being cut and then it goes inside uh, inside this um, this machine uh, and inside that there's a threshing cylinder okay so the the cut crop is actually will will, will pass through the cylinders right and it will uh, I mean the the shaft will be separated or the panicles will be separated from the grains so the grains will fall into this um, into this sheave and then it will be cleaned uh, there's gonna be uh, cleaning cleaning operation or cleaning action because there's a, uh, a fan and then the the clean grains are then being uh, transported to the to the um, storage tank okay so uh, basically what it looks like is for example this is the header okay so this is the conveyor and then right here there's going to be a, um, a tank Okay, so right here, there's actually a blade that uh, that reciprocates. 
okay so once the the standing crop is <coughs> is being hit by this header then uh, it's it's going to be cut and then the the cut the cut stocks will be transported to this conveyor and here there's and inside here there's a um, threshing cylinder and so there are many types or there are many I mean many designs of the um, of the threshing cylinder but basically the the principle is that it is separating the grains from the from the panicle or the shaft okay so let's say this is our threshing cylinder and right here the um, the grains will uh, the grains will will pass through the sheave and then the the the, the stalks or the shaft will be um, we I mean will exit uh, at some uh, at some some part of the machine okay so the the grains by the way if I draw the cross section of the threshing cylinder is something like this Okay, so once you input here the um, the the cut plants, then right here it will exit the the greens. Okay, so there's going to be greens right here, and then at some, I mean the the sh the shaft will be separated from the from the greens. Okay, so because there are also impurities that goes along with the greens, then there's going to be a blower. Okay, so to to clean the grains, okay, or to separate the impurities from the grains. So right here, there's also a blower. Okay, so let's say there's a blower, okay, that separates the impurities from the grains. So some impurities will, right, okay, will exit here, and then the the clean green, right, will be transported. Okay, so the clean greens will be trans uh, transported by an by the use of auger. Right, so let's say there's an auger or a screw conveyor, then it also there's also another screw conveyor going this way, and then the greens will exit or will be stored. Right, will be stored in the storage tank. Okay, so this equipment actually this is a v very complex equipment uh, because there's there's a lot of moving parts. Okay, but the but the main principle is that it just simply combines the cutting or ripping action and uh, threshing actions. Okay, so um, for the design considerations if we want to design an agricultural equipment or machines then th there's actually a lot of factors to be considered and I mean not just for agricultural uh, applications but also for other um, other industries but uh, the, the point here is that when making a design there's there's really a lot of factors to be considered and it's actually a challenge um, to an engineer or for a designer because uh, because design considerations actually varies from machines to machines like for example if I want to to design a combined harvester and then compare that if I just want to um, to design let's say a processing equipment or just an implement a tractor implement okay so that varies from machines to machines and also it varies from uh, from designer to do to designer okay so that depends upon the the designer as well okay so um, although it's really a variable um, variable concept but uh, it's also good to just lay out some some points right here or some considerations and just take note that this uh, this will vary actually so the first consideration that we'll we'll talk about is the 
function primary function okay so if I want to descend combine harvester then I must be able to do the function okay so that's the uh, that's the main consideration okay so uh, so uh, in designing the function then of course safety safety comes into play as well and also there is a consideration about um, about materials Okay, and also manufacturability. So, what's the use if um, if you have the materials, but um, there's no way or uh, or the manufacturing specific manufacturing operation is not available? Okay, so that's also another consideration. And also the choice of materials. So sometimes you want a material that is um, that or that has the best properties. Okay, but sometimes um, cost also comes into play, so it's really a uh, a compromise okay between all these considerations. Okay, another consideration is that about delivery or service life or repair and maintenance. So let's say uh, you, you compare uh, bolted connections and welded connections. So let's say in terms of cost, uh, you can have uh, less cost. Let's say if, if you do the welding welding joint however but if in terms of repair and maintenance then um, of course that's gonna be um, I mean that that would be impossible to repair if you do the uh, the welding okay so anyway um, it's just an uh, an example of this repair and maintenance and also the this the the service life and also the delivery Okay, and another one here is the aesthetics and also the uh, client's preference. Okay, so right here I have uh, included here a link about um, some design process regarding a combined harvester. I okay, saw so from Eric Springgate and here's uh, his uh, concept of combined harvesters. Okay, so it all starts from uh, from scratch or from sketch from sketches or sketching. So there's a lot of sketchings, and then uh, finally there's going to be renderings or drawings uh, using computers, and then prototyping. So after that you'll have uh, prototyping, and then if you are going to do it full scale, then um, I guess you would also need testing and things like that okay so uh, again for this design considerations these are just uh, some points or common considerations encountered um, encountered during the science and it really varies from machine to machines and even from uh, designer to designers all right now let's talk about um, machine components so a machine uh, is actually composed or is composed of many parts or sub-assemblies and we can actually uh, classify these components I mean the basic components uh, into um, either it's a power source or uh, in terms of um, or if it's a com components that uh, transforms uh, that includes or that involves transformation of mechanical power and also another one, although th this is more on the structural aspects, but um, I think we'll just include it here. Okay, so the structural members, like for example, the beams and the braces and things like that, or the supports. Okay, so for for the a power source, uh, we can have internal combustion engines or electric motors. Okay, so. The uh, the choice whether you would go for internal combustion engines or electric motors uh, actually depends upon uh, the application and uh, let's say if if for for agricultural operation I mean field operations okay so since there's no electrical power supply then uh, so the ones that that powers the um, let's say the tractor or the hand tractor uh, is the internal combustion engines so let's say right here this is our um, our agricultural tractor 
and right here there's going to be engines. Okay, so so for fields or in in field equipments, you would uh, you would notice that it's more on. Uh, I mean that the power source is uh, is an internal combustion engine. But for processing equipment, let uh, let's say a bucket elevator, right? Okay, so for a processing equipment, um, then the most common ones are the electric motor. And right here, let's write engines. Okay, so um, let's move on. Uh, next is the transformation of mechanical power. So these elements um, involves, uh, let's say, dissipation so if it if it involves dissipation of energy then these are clutches and uh, clutches and brakes okay so an example of this is the disc brake so th this is a disc brake okay so it's a mechanical components that actually dissipates um, dissipates power so it's found in uh, in wheels I mean in the wheels of um, of vehicles okay so it's a disc and then there's uh, there's a brake pads that once these brake pads um, touches the surface of the of this disc, then it's going to. I mean, the the rotation will uh, will stop. Okay, so another one is the clutch. So clutch basically it's a mechanical elements that uh, either engages or disengage the the power. Okay, so this one is um, it stops uh, it uh, it's it stops the transformation of power or the transmission of power. Okay, so those are the mechanical components related to, or involves, or, or that involves dissipation of energy. Okay, another class is uh, those elements that includes, uh, or that involves transmission of power. So let's say from rotational motion to linear motion. So we have um, power screws and also some type of gear drives. And of another ones, uh, another one is a mechanical components that uh, that involves rotational motion and it transmits or it um, transfers or it converts also to rotational motions so these are shafts gear drives chain drives and belt drives so now let's take a look at what um, what is this power screw so take note it's um, it's a mechanical element for for rotational to linear motion Okay, so I guess it's not uh, it's not possible. Okay, anyway, this power screw is, or or this uh, some type of gear drives, like for example the rock and pinion. Right, so let's say this is our gear, and then right here is our rock gear rock. Okay, so this one rotates, and but this gear rock. Um, this gear rock has a linear uh, linear motion. Okay, so that's why it is rotational to linear. Okay, for the components uh, with rotational to rotational motions, these are gear drives, right? gear drives, chain drives, and belt drives. Okay, so let's check um, this gear gear drives. Okay, so right here we have a gear gear and there's uh, a small gear right here this is the pinion gear uh, actually the the term pinion is used for uh, for the smallest gear uh, in the assembly 
Okay, so this is gear gear, uh, gear gear, and then this is opinion gear, and there's also you know, gear reducers uh, and some couplings, shaft couplings, and bearings right here, bearings, and uh, we have also electric motors. Okay, so uh, that's one component that has a rotational to rotational uh, motion. Okay, another one is the chain drives. Okay, so for the chain drive, um, so we have here a roller chain. So from this, uh, I think this is a gear reducer, um, and then this will be the driven equipment. Okay, so it's being, I mean, the power from this uh, source, uh, because this gear reducer is most likely connected to a source. So uh, the power is being transferred from this uh, driver to the driven equipment through the uh, through the chain okay another one is the belt drives okay, so belt drives it can be flat belts or v belts so this one is flat belt and this one is v belts so we'll have a detailed discussions about that um, in the succeeding topics so basically um, this is the source and then this is the um, the driven equipment so you see that the power is being transmitted uh, okay from the source to the to the driven equipment through through this flexible belt okay and uh, here for the gears uh, there's no intermediate um, intermediate element or material like chains or I mean like chains or the belts because the the a power transmission is through the meshing of the teeth of the gears okay so we also have um, mechanical components uh, related to storage uh, storage of energy so uh, these are components that, that stores energy examples are flywheels and uh, springs Okay, so flywheels um, in an internal combustion engine, um, there's, a, there's a part there. Uh, okay, so let's say this is the crankshaft, and then right here we have pistons. Uh, okay, so we have piston, uh, pistons, this is the crankshaft, and um, in one end there's, there's a flywheel right here, so uh, that uh, that maintains the uh, I think that that maintains the energy the rotational energy okay for the springs um, this is also common in suspensions and many equipments okay and there are a lot of um, there are many types of uh, springs okay anyway uh, le let's move on okay now for the <coughs> for the um, structural member uh, we have actually we have already discussed this in our structures engineering we have line members so these are like for example the actual members or beams or columns or braces so line line members basically it uh, it's a member a structural member that has a length right the length is way larger than the cross section and for surface members we have uh, like for example the walls or the plates so the area is way larger than the thickness and for the supports and joints this includes like for example the hinge or the bearings uh, the pins and things like that okay so now let's move on to the documents for mechanical designs so uh, we have um, documents really related to the um, computations of the sizes uh, the, this can be computer generated uh, by, by the use of software so uh, for us here in, in this course uh, we'll just do it manually and we also have documents like for example the working drawings um, and take note that this working drawings it's based on the mechanical drawing format so it's not the same as what we did in the structures engineering uh, course uh, rather we'll use a mechanical drawing format and we will 
uh, I mean, and I will discuss this later. Okay, and we also have specifications. So uh, recall that when we use specifications, these are documents that uh, can't be expressed uh, in terms of drawings. Then uh, we need to include that in the specification. So regarding, uh, let's say, the workmanship. Okay, and another document would be the bill of materials and probably many more. Okay, so now in our uh, in our next slide, so I'll just run through this uh, scope of practice. Although you can you can actually read this um, in the R A ten nine one five. So uh, basically, the scope is uh, the scope includes about the mm, I mean the scope of practice um, also encompasses the preparation of engineering design plans, uh, specifications, and estimates, uh, supervisions, um, supervision of the construction, operation and maintenance, uh, testing, uh, manufacture, distribution, installation, and sale of agricultural and biosystems machinery. Okay, so you can just read. Uh, you can read that in the R810 and R15. And in the section 27E, there's uh, there's actually a provisions regarding the sign and seal of AB engineer. And it says that all drawings, plans, specifications, and other documents and reports to be used for the design, construction, test, and evaluation, research, and extension of agricultural uh, and biosystems, building structures, machineries, right? They don't, machineries and equipment. Um, it shall be signed and sealed by a licensed uh, agricultural and biosystems engineer and violation of any of the foregoing shall be ground for administrative and or criminal action okay so upon signing uh, upon signing uh, we need to have the professional license number and the duration of its validity and the professional tax receipt number okay so this is section 28 Okay, and in section 7D, by the way, it states that drawings, plans, design specifications are duly signed, stamped, or sealed as instruments of service. They become as property and documents of the AB engineer, whether the projects for which they were made is executed or not. Okay, so this is not actually, uh, I mean, this is actually typical for our other professions. They have uh, something like, um, like uh, essentially the same provisions like this. Okay, anyway, um, that's all. Um, that's all for these video presentations. Uh, and in the next video, we'll be discussing the next topic on materials and manufacturing.